key things that we need to resolve this year is getting the vote the Google Pay, um, Apple Pay, and physical cards out of the way. And that's once that's done, I think we achieved, um, we've completed the, uh, the transition. Hi everyone, my name is Rogier van Kuyk van de Rijker Leven, and today I have a very special guest. It's Daniel, it's the CEO and co-founder of Plutus. Uh, I met him in Amsterdam uh, during a Plutus event uh, a couple of months ago. We had an interesting conversation and I wanted to dive into the, the Plutus world uh, a bit more. Uh, myself, I'm also a Plutus stacker. I'm a veteran uh, Plutus owner. Uh, there is by no means any money involved in this interview. I'm not getting paid to do this interview whatsoever. It's just my interest into the product and the community, sharing the knowledge and, of course, the conversation with Dan. So, Dan, thank you for coming on board of this uh, this, uh, this cool meetup virtually. And uh, the first question is, basically, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, activity regarding to Plutus. And even today, there was a big update on a bunch of changes from Plutus. Back when I started in uh, 22 with uh, Plutus, it was pretty hard to get money on my account and spend it. I have to wait a couple of business days and now everything is instant. But one of the biggest issues I think today is that not everybody can use their virtual Plutus card. So maybe you can give us a quick update, like how are things regarding to that very specific thing? Okay, the hard question straight away. Uh, thank you for the intro, uh, Roger. It was a pleasure to meet you. In in um, Amsterdam when we came there for the meetup. With Google Pay, it's sadly one of those um, features that we expected to arrive a lot sooner. Um, you know, throughout in our roadmap for those who have been following us, they know that we announced it to be delivered in Q3 and Q4, uh, along with the physical cards. But unfortunately, it's one of those things that working with third party partners, um, such as Google, who have had our application for quite some time, we expected the approval in, um, you know, early on, but unfortunately now it's taken a bit longer. But good news is that we expect it to be resolved, um, you know, before the end of this year. So I'm hoping that pretty soon all the pain points that customers have been having in terms of, um, you know, not, I know a lot of, I know, for example, you said early on before um, the call that you were using Curve. A lot of you, a lot of our customers are using Curve, but it's, it's quite a bit actually a pain point of friction for anybody who loves Plutus. They don't, they have to go and download another app. So yeah. we understand that it's frustrating for, not for maybe not for you, but the majority of the customers. And it's frustrating for myself as well and for everybody else in the team. So rest assured, it's one of our key things that we need to resolve this year is getting the vote, the Google Pay, um, Apple Pay and physical cards out of the way. And that's once that's done, I think we achieved, um, we've completed the, uh, the transition. I mean, we've or pretty, we're pretty much 80% complete, completed the transition already because um, as, as you said earlier, that the problem people were having, especially the European customers, were the difficulty in order to uh, add balance to the card. And sometimes it took between two hours. It could take up to two to four days, you know, depending on the safer issues and the transition, the amount of um, time it took. Now we were pretty much instant and we're able to deliver a lot more features, uh, stuff like um, rewards on direct debits and so on. All these things will come pretty soon. So all the pain, pain points customers are having due to transition issues, they'll be soon forgotten about and uh, you know, we'll be looking upwards. I think the, what I can remember very clearly, I was in Barcelona in May 22 was in the in the deep bear market everything was terrible and 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 then crypto.com uh, one of the also one of the rewards the bigger rewards program that everybody knows obviously crypto.com is a large exchange also sponsoring ufc and formula one and they toned down the rewards on their card and everybody dumped it right so the price went from i know it was like 40 cents uh, a lot down and i think that's also when plutus got very popular like hey there's something new on the market it's interesting it's young it's uh it's a different tokenized a different model of uh, tokenomics and we'll talk about it in a little bit and i think then you could really see uh plutus taking off because as i read on your on your website you just reach an enormous milestone of 100,000 customers i think it's it's amazing i mean every entrepreneur would be very proud to have 100,000 customers so how 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 was your experience on preparing for such a large number of customers and then going from 100,000 to the next 100,000? Well, it, I spoke to my team about this. It was 
when sitting alone by myself, I'd kind of write the white paper, think of an idea of how, what futures will be. Because at the time when futures was created, I would take you guys back to 2013, 14. Um, this is around the time when I was like a, already a year deep in into crypto. So I started by 2012, went through the whole experience of like, you know, investing in different coins with the early stages that were, then, you know, it's the steps that every, every single, every single person that goes through that on board to crypto. I went through the same experience, invested in something called Konya coin, which was in 2012 and pretty much lost all the money within instantly. And then my started mining Bitcoin. And then once I got deep into it and started understanding that the problem people are having is they, they, they want this to be the world currency, but it actually can't be a world currency because merchants have a problem adding it on Coinbase and BitPay and other companies were trying to get, to get merchants to accept uh, um, Bitcoin as a payment system. But over time, in the come 2014, is only 10,000 merchants are accepting the, accepting this beautiful currency, the you know the decentralized, decentralized currency that I was obsessed with. So for me, it's the you know as an entrepreneur, it was the decision to make whether to create something what everybody else was working on or try to do something risk averse, which doesn't exist. And one solution was to fix my own problem to be to allow, you know to allow customers to people to be able to spend Bitcoin um, as a user experience. But for, for, the, for the merchants, they always receive fiat on the other, other end. So then I got down to writing the white paper on how to do that. And, you know, it's, by 2015, we were able to release that. And um, 2016 helped us raise the funding. And, you know, now we're here. And going back to your comparison with competitors, uh, since the 2016 white paper, our plan was always to create the best rewards card, rewards card. And, um, you know, our focus has been on rewards instead of trying to be um, a jack of all trades and master of nothing. You know, so therefore, I believe Futures card it simply does not really have a competitor. You know, I, think, I believe we are the most cost effective in terms of higher rewards and, you know, customer satisfaction and so on. So, um, you know, the vision is not complete yet, but I do give a lot of credit to the Plutus team for for us to be able to, for where we are today, because as you said, 100,000 customers is a dream for all founders. And I always said to, you know, to the team that the first 100,000 customers are the hardest to get and the next 1 million become um, comparatively easier. And so uh, I feel this transition will help us get there. The program in which you get the cashback is it's still being tweaked right you see changes throughout the months so where do you think you are at the moment in finding the sweet spot on people paying an x amount for um, subscription models to take to get certain rewards where do you think you are at the moment i i appreciate that during the transition and the difficulty adjustment has been difficult for customers especially like um trying to keep up with all the changes um, but, you know, transition chain related changes are something that we announced many, many months before in advance and same with difficulty adjustment. Uh, but, you know, we are a community based company. We are built by them and for them. Um, we listen to them a lot. Like we have four or five different communication channels and, you know, being a community driven company can can also be stressful, <laughs> which it has been. But also has so many positive uh, different uh, different results, which I personally am very lucky to have. You know, because without them, you know, to be able to get gather feedback straight away is something many companies don't have, and the fact that we have that is quite crucial. So our main goal is to get all the problems sorted out, special Google Pay and everything else, and look beyond that and. You know, the transition issues will be forgotten about, and especially the same with tokenomics. Uh, we can jump in. I think you have that question coming up soon. So we'll cover that. What is, in your opinion, the, cr the critical success factor for the next two years for Plutus? A uh, critical one, starting with the first of all, is completing, completing this transition. Uh, once that's done, uh, customers will be experiencing a completely different app, uh, something that they haven't experienced before in the past and what they're going through right now, for example, Google Pay, Apple Pay, its physical card and bank like features like rewards on debit card and so on. Once we've achieved the core um, 
features that we want, uh, we go on to working on Bluetooth SOP, which was planned for this year, but uh, unfortunately because of trying to improve the product, the core parts of the product and the transition and working on all the sustainability, sustainability related uh, updates, we've moved that to next year. So once we've completed Bluetooth SOP, um, the main focus is in parallel for me personally is uh, after the transition is uh, US next year, because uh, that will help us get to the next 1 million customers. I think you, you just mentioned it, uh, and, and we formally know it as the Plutus DEX, and now it's going to be called Plutus Swap. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe to touch on that subject, obviously, I've used it in the past, right? I've, I've uh, sold some Plut to get some, some credits on my debit card, also for test purposes. And you could also swap it, uh, I think, also to ETH, if I'm not mistaken, because obviously it's on ERC20, it's on Ethereum uh, blockchain. And uh, previously, maybe you can explain to the people like why why is it not currently available? First of all, in the UK, it wasn't we had to remove it from from the UK because of the crypto asset regulations that came into effect uh, recently. But we had preempted this. We had been in communications with the FCA, uh, going back and forth. I we have actually a very good relationship with them. You know, we have. Um, an account manager assigned to who is overseeing all the changes. Uh, they require us to, well, well, they don't require us to do anything at the moment because what, what, what we've done in terms of stopping the Plutus DEX, we've achieved this already. And what they, what we're waiting for is to get an approval for them to see whether they accept what we want to do or not. Um, we, it is in the process. So we, we expected this last year. Uh, we still don't have an answer from the FCA, and, sim and I think this is due to there's a very small team and over a thousand plus applications with them. Um, so, in the on the UK front, we will know very soon. On the European front, we always had issues on the liquidity front because uh, the Plutus Dex is built in a way it's built to be peer to peer. We are not the ones who provide the liquidity. So we we stepped in where it was a um, where it was necessary in order to provide a good user experience. So we did that for almost a year and it did cost us, what cost, well, many customers do, don't know this, but it did cost us uh, more than a million dollars in terms of being able to sustain the um, Plutus Dex while it was live. But it, as a long term as a business, it's not, it's not sustainable. So we decided to take remove it while, while we able to fix all the other issues and then come back with a much better Pluto SOP, which has um, market makers and API um, solutions involved. So a team has been working on it. We have tested it out with market makers, but to release it right now, is not the right time because we have a lot of other priorities. So yeah. Pluto's DEX or Pluto SOP has been uh, deprioritized. So a question about the, um, the moment when Plutus actually purchased the Plu that was um, available on Plutus Dex previously. What happened to that Plutus? Did that go back into the reward pool, or was that just in the treasury treasury of uh, Plutus? Yeah, th th that what we bought was went back to the treasury early on. Yeah. But we just, like, keep keep in mind, just to clarify, we didn't buy that back from external markets or anywhere. We're not allowed to do that. Yeah. It was uh, essentially um, a marketing cost for the company in order to keep yeah. the product working. You know, that's what and, okay. So, and about the market makers, does and uh, I mean, I can totally understand that liquidity is is very important because what liquidity provides, if there's not enough liquidity, there's a lot of spread, right? So, for instance, uh, a token has a value of uh, ten, just or just any any example. But depending on how many people are offering, selling uh, a token, or buying a token, then it might differ from the market price. So that's where market makers step in. Does this mean that the new version of the Plutus Dex, uh, Plutus, uh, Plutus Swap, what's it going to be called again? The Plutus Swap. Plutus Swap. Does that mean that it's going to be combined, for example, with Uniswap or different platforms, depending on where it is, or how does it, how will that then functionally work? No, because Uniswap unfortunately is a um, crypto to crypto platform, whereas in uh, our Plutus Swap is a, a uniquely built, one of a kind actually, a way for you to convert your crypto into fiat in a very non-custodial way. Um, since my time in crypto, I haven't seen anything similar uh, having been built. 
in the past we match uh, we try to match customers with each other yeah and because you know it's been built the platform is built in a way there's demand can vary but we also don't want to disappoint people who are trying to convert crypto mm -hmm. at the time while you know with their with their proof that they've earned so we want to allow that feature but to be able to do that properly um and have it working all the time with liquidity with depth as well is to in include market makers well look with the with the market makers is kind of tricky because market makers go many ways in, in in this industry right so you can hire market market hire a market maker uh which most of the companies do in this space is to manipulate or so on in our case it's been just to if you partner with them just to provide uh, liquidity so what how it will work they will sign up to the platform and they will essentially act similar to how a customer will behave but because of the liquidity that they provide, they will be given a fee or a spread on top. So there'll be a business um, in a contract between ourselves and the market makers, and they'll be done for customers' benefit. Yeah. And and when was the time frame? You 2024, right? You want uh, to do or no time frame, idea? time frame was this year. I know people will be kind of unhappy that to know that it's not. I think people really expect that. Uh, but it's unfortunately this is how it is and we have to yeah you know, but i can also i mean from my own experience uh is the most important thing is that you can use the product and that that the rewards everything works if you want to sell your blue whatsoever you can still do it using your metamask wallet go to for for instance uniswap and you can swap it for different uh, rc20 tokens so there are ways so i can understand that i mean no it's not possible to then deposit euros or 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 G gbp on your on your on your wallet i mean i don't think it's the number one priority for most people i mean for myself it's going to be a nice feature but for me it's not the most important and i'm i i, I wonder how many people what the percentage think uh, differently huh? well, uh, well from my judgment personal judgment i think the reason people i really desire that is people don't want to go through the whole process of paying gas fees on withdrawing the blue and going to the exchanges so they just want to pay the subscription fees and be able to uh sell you know their that makes sense, that that makes sense. It, yeah. i understand that people want that convenience um you know but as, as, as i said you know it's stressful for me as much as it, it is for anyone else yeah so let's let's dive into the united states uh, it was uh, of course um uh, we read it uh, on uh, multiple blogs that uh, 2023 was going to be the big go live for the United States. And obviously everybody got very enthusiastic because that means potentially a lot more customers. So can you give us an update where Plutus is standing on that matter? We have partnerships with uh, local banking providers um, and uh, signed, have signed the agreement, but we have also have legal approval for launching our rewards card, sorry, the card program on its own but we are still waiting for having we've been going through a lot of back and forth to have the approval for um our rewards program uh, we're confident that we will have it because it's essentially a utility token we have a legal classification in the us and in the uk and even in the uk since the crypto asset rules most companies have shut down their crypto related services we are able to continue because this is it's essentially not a security it is just a reward card program, simple, similar to how you would get rewarded with something like Tesco's or um, I don't know, similar example in Europe, but uh, for UK customers, they would know what I mean. So, but I mean, is there any insight in when it's going to happen in the United States? You know, it's, it's it, the, the, one of the biggest issues customers have is with the ETAs that we've provided, right? We are ambitious, we we mean well. We always want to do things right and get it out in the time, but sometimes we're hit by roadblocks such as unexpected issues, um, you know, bugs related to the system, and also, um, you know, for example, when we depend on third parties, like Google Pay, Apple Pay approval, which should have done a long time ago, and it's, it, the same could be said about physical card, right? The, the delivery time for, from the, comp, from the manufacturing companies usually between four, five to eight weeks, but it's now we've been waiting for much longer. So with the US, I we don't depend so as such on third party, but it's also up to us, but we cannot, I, I for me personally, we cannot spread our wings too much before we fix all the core issues and then be able to get to the 
uh, go to US because you know if we go to US with the current state that we are in today, we won't get to hundred thousand customers. I mean, one million customers straight away, right? So. Yeah. One million customers is just the first step. So the aim is to be the best yeah. of all gets to many customers. So okay. I, uh, I know customers are waiting. Mm-hmm. Look, I understand for customers, it doesn't, for especially European customers, it doesn't really matter whether we go to US or not. I understand why they want us to go to US, right? They want more people participating in the ecosystem. But we have to do that in the right time. And, yeah, uh, I understand. Yeah. Rush. I think this is a good bridge to the next question. It is about uh, the sustainability of the rewards pool of blue uh, so there are 20 million tokens in uh, i mean uh, not in circulation because that's a over a little bit over 4 million is it by the way accurate information on coin gecko do you guys provide like yeah yeah coin coin gecko is pretty accurate it's uh, quite it's cmt sometimes um bugs out but that's different yeah, yeah. So as you can imagine, uh, even with a uh, hundred thousand customers now already at four million, so that's a twenty uh, percent of the total of the total supply with a hundred thousand. So let's let's fast forward another year or two with the same customer base, and maybe the spend goes up a little bit and the rewards uh, stay the same. Then then what's the longevity of the current? Yeah, the current uh, cycle. Oh, yeah. According to the example that you gave, we're unsustainable. Uh, it won't last long, and that's the honest truth. Uh, and hence, why we we can see what's happening because you know we created a very attractive model to get to the hundred thousand customers. It was like kind of an interactive yeah. interactive. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. We came in a risk averse market with zero customers. We understood what we had to do. Now we've acquired at least hundred thousand customers. We are making amends just so we can continue to our next million customers. So difficulty adjustment was, or was part of this, you know, sustaining to create that long-term sustainability yeah. when we get to the million customers. But unfortunately, we had to um, kind of revert that simply because, due to the transition issues, it was yeah. with misconceptions. Uh, everybody had their own opinions of it, and it kind of had a collective uh, movement and fear built towards it. Right. So we, as I said, cut community oriented company. So we listened to their feedback. We've adjusted that. So we've adjusted it in a way that we get to achieve the same goal of sustainability uh, without going through the difficulty adjustment and lowering the rewards um, and lo- lowering the requirements to get on the reward level. So we've done that by introducing a re- something called a rewards cap. So, you know, depending even if you can spend 100,000 pounds or euros a month, you only get rewards um, um, on the allocated amount that you have to your account. So that way we pretty much reduce our emission from 80 to 90%, depending on which account level you are. Um, and so th- this will come out by the end of this year, we're aiming for at least. And when, once it does, we hoping that, you know, sustainability would improve. Yeah, yeah because that I, I read it. So this, this simply means that if you are not a stacker, for instance, I'm a veteran, I'm a grandfathered veteran at 500 uh, blue at the moment, and I get 5% cash back. And, but if you don't have it stacked, then you only get rewards to a certain amount. So that's how you slow down the, the, the rewards being drawn from the rewards pool, right? From people who are not stackers. But for instance, if you have 500 blue, you can only have 40,000 people having 500 blue and then the 20 million is gone. Right? So that's why the, of course, the difficulty adjustment needs to step in somewhere. Uh, no, we, we found another way of achieving the same goal. Instead of um, making it difficult for stackers to get on board, um, we found, you know, new utilities. For example, allow customers to redeem blue for to get on to the same reward level uh, for a limited limited period period of time, uh, be it a month, three months, or a year. So we're working on this. Um, this feature and it's all it will also have is something called incremental reward levels, which is a, something rooted from the community feedback. It essentially allows it makes you wanting to hold your earned blue uh, in order to be able to uh, go up the le- next level up a lot easier. Uh, so we've taken some of the feedback and incorporated incorporated into our own model, and we will be releasing it soon after this current release, release that we've done today. And uh, soon after that, plans for additional utility and a uh, way for brands to be able to redeem blue. So we can't control sustainability 100% with one single feature, but we have to introduce multiple features in order to create a house, you know, 
a dwelling which is self-sustainable. Yeah, and this also means that, that the community can also expect that during the transition from 100,000 to 200,000 or even a million customers, we will see changes from, from time to time to keep adjusting the number so you have your long liberty of the of the system, obviously, because once... Sorry, no, just on that point. Um, at, at this point right now, we don't have plans to increase requirements for st on the stacking front. Mm -hmm. As I said, we have achieved the goal of you know, so for example, the reason we did the difficulty adjustment, we, um, although some customers spend only like, for example, 2000 pounds per month or euros per month, so they achieve a certain amount of rewards, but the, all these levels um, emitted thousands worth of rewards per month because we have customers who spend 5,000, 10,000 and 20,000 and so on. Uh, we, have, we have legends and goats. So what many customers didn't understand that it costs us a lot to sustain these re reward levels at this rate. So what we have had to do is adjust the rewards cap. So instead of the difficulty adjustment, we just re adjust the rewards cap and we end up achieving the same goal and still allow lower requirements. And we can have these lower requirements yeah, yeah, yeah. for a long yeah. time. And in fact, we can even reduce these uh, requirements because if, it, if we end up achieving a supply shock, which uh, makes it harder to get to, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll be able to amend this uh, for customer's benefit. So about the PLU redeeming, yeah, you mentioned it, uh, and also you said uh, partners redeeming PLU. So I understand the concept of customers, such as myself, I could redeem an X amount of PLU to receive extra benefits on my cashback for a longer period, so I could get rewards uh, on top of a larger amount of money. So how does that mean? How does it work for partners? Um, what is a partner? Let's start with the question. What is so a partner? The partners are, we have um, for 40 on so perks. So quite a few of them have partnered with us. So we have a um, revenue sharing agreement uh, with several and we are using the data that we have with others and uh, trying to um, ink an agreement that allows us to revenue share with uh, even big suppliers like Netflix and so on, who we don't have as a partner yet. So partner basically means uh, someone we have a revenue sharing agreement with and they pay us as an affiliate fee, fee for sending our customers to use their service. Yeah, okay. And, but but how, okay, so that's clear then. And how does the redeem function work then that for somehow, how, how does that, how does it go back into uh, work? So partners such as uh, Curve and um, others who understand crypto or the marketing team does, we've essentially asked um, them to provide it. We've essentially asked them to pay, uh, pay the invoices in Plu for moving forward. This is something that obviously no, not big brands that we've partnered with can agree to because, you know, Plu is not, um, you know, a mass market a token that everybody has access to. So we've decided to, we will help these companies. Uh, so every time we get paid in fiat, for example, we we go through the process of turning that into PLU and putting that, putting that back into our rewards pool. And uh, now we have Haggas and Krauthers, which are um, accredited UK accountants team. So they verify each of the transaction with our invoices that we've received versus the transaction on the blockchain. And they approve that, and once it's done, um, all the transactions, all the all, all the coins that we receive through from the brands are then sent to the rewards pool. So, how, but then you don't make any money of of done that. No, well. no, we, we this is not for us. We we haven't done this to make money. Uh, we 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 make money from different uh, aspects. We do this from um, subscription fees and you know. Uh, the Plutus Dex shop that we had in the past and different fees that we have on the platform. But one thing that we decided to, anything that we redeem on the platform, whether it be by a brand or by a, a customer, it goes back to the rewards pool, simply because we try to create a self-sufficient dwelling where instead of lasting for two or three years, we can be a company that goes on for 10 to 20 years. And so that, that, that means that when, when you scale your business and you get more and more partners uh, that potentially do some sort of reven revenue sharing with you and, and you convert that fiat into PLU, and that means you're buying up the token and putting it back into the rewards pool. So it, it, 
that means that there has to be blue available on the market to buy obviously we well i hope not because uh we want people to be you know using it for different purposes and um if there is i mean look there's I mean, in, in any in any in any uh, healthy economy, there's always uh, a, a right balance, so to say, right? The, yeah. The, the demand and supply. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's when when the market makers come in, right? So that's why we've tried to uh, address that early on, because one of one of the last spaces session we had, somebody complained that he could not buy Plu, um, because a, it would. If, if if you try to buy even a small amount of blue, it would put put you know on the exchanges it would send the price uh, up, and he complained to me as if that being a problem. And I said we don't we don't have any power over that. You know we don't control that because we don't work with exchanges on. We sorry we don't work with market makers on exchanges. It's only for something that we can do internally on our platform. The question, Daniel. Next one uh, is about the speed of redeeming. Uh, receiving your plu that you have received on your rewards and putting them on your metamask wallet now it's like every wednesday huh you pay uh, three euros and i know that you have an ambition to change that to have it uh, a lot faster than that how how is that going for those who follow my, me on social media especially for a while earlier at the start of the year i put out a tweet that i had a personal goal one of my personal goals was to allow people to be able to withdraw instantly and have the audit process because for me even if i was a Plutus customer it's such a pain point you shouldn't shouldn't have to wait for like you know wednesday approval and so on but the reason we have to do that is to control sustainability we have had we've stopped over fifty thousand worth of blue uh fraudulent blue coming into circulation due to audits uh because of such a high benefits obviously we've attracted um you know fraud so we've included audits which i have added um additional time for uh, uh, from for blue withdrawals uh as i said personal goal is to have that change we have hired a compliance um head of compliance recently in order to be able to manage what i'm trying to achieve is you know uh, to create an audit system which is done within the first 45 days of the approval process so when once it's approved you can click and withdraw your coin straight away instead of having to wait um you know even every even an hour so that's something that i i'm committed to doing as a personal goal and i can rest assured that we will achieve this uh, very soon so uh daniel one of the last questions is related to customer support i mean a hundred thousand customers a million customers people are asking questions how do you cope with the the growing community and and how do you scale that with customer support or oh, is customer support is Part of the product for me personally because uh both of these things go hand in hand product and cost cs are are one um so you know usually on the normal, normal cases when everything is working fine we don't have any many customers creating tickets or you know or issues uh, occurring but unfortunately due to the transition our team has had an influx of tickets of different issues even simple stuff like you know when does google pay coming uh, coming live uh so that adds a big strain on the size of us uh, customer support team uh, in order to get the replies out. Uh, for me, a best product is where you can reply to your customers within 24 hours with a solution or at least with a response. Uh, we always try to achieve that, but recently it hasn't been that. But uh, for me, as a personal goal that I made in one of my tweets earlier in the year, the start of the year was CS was improving CS was one of those goals. And we, what that means uh, is to create CS in a way where you have 24 seven um, live support with chat, you get responses within 24 hours and your tickets don't uh, have to wait for, depending on the issue, don't have to wait for a few more few days to a week. So with the transition, CS is also one of our personal priorities. So customers will, will end up seeing uh, a better experience. Just for those customers who are new, they might see a bit of issues with the CS, uh, but you, Anyone who's been with the platform for many years, they will know that you know CS is one of our main, um, is basically part of the product feature. So Daniel, wrapping up this uh, interview, is there anything else that you want to share with the community? Uh, not in terms of sharing, but I do want to apologize, sincere apology for all the inconveniences that customers are having. Um, it's not something that we take it lightly, take lightly, and also thank 
thank every single person who has been supporting us through the difficult times. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, I, all we can say that we are full hand, fully hands on deck to resolve all the issues and um, get to our main goal of having the complete, have completing the vision for the app, which I believe we will achieve very soon. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel, for the conversation. And uh, don't forget to follow Daniel on Twitter, on X, I have to say nowadays. And thank you everybody for watching and uh, we'll meet again uh, soon, Daniel. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate that.